When I, when I finished my education down the street here at NYU uh, Medical Center, the data that, that was given to me was one in a thousand molecules will ever make it to be a drug. When we teach that uh, piece of data today, it's one in 10,000. The challenge of getting new drugs developed have become tremendously difficult, especially because unforeseen, unexpected, um, challenges to safety that occur either early on in development or in fact, and that's the worst case scenario, when drugs actually come to market, people start using them broadly and suddenly there's a safety signal, like a cardiovascular signal or something like that, and the drug has to be taken out of the market. Well, the first company here, Tissue Dynamics, is going to change all of that, so I'd like to uh, invite the uh, founder of uh, Tissue Dynamics, Professor Kobe Nachmias, to give the first presentation. Hi guys, and thank you for staying this long to, to hear our, uh, our pitches. So my name is Kobe Nachmias. I am the founding director of the Center for Bioengineering at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. I have over a decade of experience in uh, developing and commercializing biotech. And over the last five years, we have spent $5 million in my lab developing a technology that in my mind is really the, the smartphone for drug development, and this is tissue dynamics. And what we really want to do is provide a quantum leap in our capability to understand biology and actually apply it for drug development, nutraceuticals, and even cosmetic safety assessment. So tissue dynamics is there because tissue dynamics is doing something very, very unique. We're actually integrating sensors physically into tiny microscopic you know, living tissues. Um, and that allows us to completely communicate with those tissue, get information and send information in a way that wasn't possible before. When you talk about drug development, we need to understand that we have a major problem. You know, if it used to cost around $600 million to bring a drug to the market, today an estimate talks about $2.6 billion to bring a single molecule to the market. And, and if you're thinking or imagining a situation where a chemist is actually sitting for 20 years working on a single molecule, then you have been a little bit, bit out of date. Today, combinatorial chemistry makes sure that we have hundreds of thousands of compounds running and we can screen all of them against any biological model that you so choose. That allows us to get hundreds of new leads, not one molecule that can potentially cure breast cancer, but hundreds of them. And then the process is a process of elimination. Which one works the best? Which one causes the least amount of residual damage? The problem is that we have absolutely no tools to do it effectively. We use animals that really do not replicate the human response. They do not have the meta metabolism or genetics or physiology of humans. And when we go to clinical trials, this means that 90% of our molecules fail and another 10% fail after they reach the market. And what's making it worse is that every time we fail, we have to go back to the drawing board, take another molecule and try again and fail and go back and try again. A Sisyphean process if there ever was one. And every time we fail, we don't learn anything new. There is no information learned from failure, so this process cannot be iterative. Our platform changes all that. We use human cells to create human tissues, about half a millimeter in size. We have human liver, brain, heart, kidney, all on a chip, but what makes us unique is the fact that we have those sensors inside. We can actually measure tiny fluctuations in energy that allows us to essentially say what is wrong and how it's being changed. This task actually provides something called a mechanism of action. We know why something works, and when it doesn't, we know why it didn't work and can change it. The data structure looks like this. It's not very different from your Tesla or your other hybrid car. We know where energy is coming from, and this is really unique. And what, with this platform, we've been able to do some really transformative things. For example, a drug that was developed by Pfizer back in 2000 uh, was safe in animal studies, safe in clinical studies, got to the market and failed after one year, costing Pfizer about $2 billion. Our platform could actually detect the subtoxic sub stress and define new stress margins. If they use our technology, they wouldn't have this problem. 
Another drug called cyclosporin causes significant kidney damage. We still use it because it's the best drug, at, drug around, but you know, this is a huge problem. And with our platform, we could actually figure out what is the mechanism of damage and block it, and essentially patent a new formulation. This means that this unique strata structure is, is really, un is, is really allows us to do some amazing things, including take all this data that is now functional and put it on the cloud. So the next time you take your protein, your gene therapy, or your small molecule, we'll be able to tell you how it looks like and what is the mechanism and how best to solve it. Uh, this has been all over the news. You know, it was identified as a major breakthrough by the Horizon 2020 by the European Commission, and we published major impact papers. But really, the value proposition is this. This is the new iPhone. It's a platform, it's a plate reader that you can integrate into every single lab routine. It doesn't require any new skills. Everybody can use it. You can connect it to your robotic platform, you connect it in clinical toxicity or even in hospitals. It allows you to do things that nobody else does. Now, this has been a rapidly growing market over the last couple of years because people are realizing that animal models are just not, not going to cut it. So money has been flowing fast from animal experiments to organ on chip. And we're seeing a CAGR of about 70% every year. That's an annual growth rate. And the estimate is that this market will reach $6 billion by 2025. It's not only pharmaceutical, it's also cosmetics and also nutraceuticals. So it's a very interesting market to be in. Now we created a company about a year ago and we didn't raise a seed round because we didn't need to. Right off the bat, we actually managed to bring in about a quarter of a million dollars with service contracts, both with companies like L'Oreal, Teva, and Merck. Um, this has been a really, uh, okay, a, a unique experience because we are really very interestingly placed in this field. There are other companies that are competing with us that have complex biological models, but simply do not have sensors. They do not have functional information that can help make informed decisions. And there are companies that make some sensors, you know, one or two, not the array that we have, but they don't have any complex biological models. We're the only ones that actually have both, putting us in a very unique innovative therapeutic zone. Uh, what we are forecasting is really the sales of equipment. And once you have this equipment, you can think about this Nespresso models, a lot of consumables that actually go with it. And we are predicting by 2025 revenues of upwards of $100 million. We have several patents. One of them, the first one was already granted and four more that have been uh, submitted, uh, essentially protecting us from all the integrations of sensors and biological tissues. And this is where I stop, so we definitely want your, your money, uh, so please invest. <laughs> uh, we are now going into Series A, rising, raising $5 million, but this is a fascinating competition, and thank you all for being here. Okay. Um, thank the clock you. was on five. What? The, no, clock, the clock started was, on five. No, the clock is now on five because we have uh, time for Q&A, so as promised, first rights to John. And then if you have a question from the audience, please raise your hand and we'll run a mic to you. So you're planning to sell hardware? Hardware, a, yeah. A razor, razor blade model. Can yeah. I ask why you wouldn't be going with a SaaS model, a software as a, a service model, which is an annual uh, kind of uh, uh, model? It seems as though your software and your data is a big part of this. And uh, just wondering why you're choosing the hardware uh, model. Because you can't sell apps if you don't have an iPhone. You need to get the hardware in first. Once you have the capability of actually producing data, then you can use this data and provide service from a cloud-based database. Uh, we have a lot of know-how, but until our instruments are sitting in the laboratories of everybody around the world and they get the, the, our experience in actually building this up, then you know it's not very useful. Think about an app store without a smartphone. Sure. Right. What what, so, what is the entry point? How much does a uh, company or an institution need to spend to get your system in to get started? 
So our system is priced at around $180,000 for an instrument. It's actually exactly the same as a Cirrus machine or any flux to analyzer. It's the same entry, entry uh, price points for everything. But keep in mind that the second they buy the instrument, the consumables are much higher margins and they're really married to us. So think about an espresso model. The, are the consumables the little sensors themselves? The plastics and the sensors, yes. Yeah. So we have a question or two from the audience. 